Welcome back to another episode of It's All Clutter. I'm Jess Marcy, and this is my weekly podcast where I talk about all of the different types of clutter in your life and how they're connected, and I give you actionable steps for actually tackling the clutter, whether it's emotional, physical, financial, whatever it is, we help you get from point A to point B as quickly and easily as possible. I am so excited that you have tuned in this week because this is a really important topic that feels uncomfortable. And you know that if it feels uncomfortable to listen to this, it's probably something that you should hear. On this episode of It's All Clutter, we're diving into resentment and how it impacts the clutter in your life. such a poison in our relationships that I actually hate the word. I hate talking about it, but it's so important that we do talk about this and we do tackle this because resentment comes up so much in relation to clutter. Clients that I have worked with feel resentful about the clutter in their homes, about the cleaning in their homes, about the stress that clutter is creating in their lives when it's not necessarily their clutter or when they're living with somebody else who should be equally, equally responsible for the mess in the house, or when somebody else is bringing clutter into their lives. There are so many ways that feelings of resentment come up in connection to clutter that it's really important we figure out how to tackle this. And I can tell you personally on my clutter journey, I spent years living in the poisonous, negative feedback loop of resentment towards my husband. And in, it was only once that I figured out that I had a responsibility with this resentment and that I was making a choice to stay resentful. Once I recognized that, I was able to move forward and things have gotten so much better over the years. But it was only after I could say, you know what? My resentment is not helping. It's not helping. There is a line that I wrote in my journal years ago that was such an aha moment for me. I want to share it with you right now. I don't know where this line came from. I wrote it down from something that I was reading, so I can't credit the author, but just listen to this. Living with resentment is like taking poison and expecting another person to get sick. That is what I had been doing for so long. And it was so detrimental, not only to my relationships, but it was detrimental to me getting to this goal of having a peaceful home. You, I couldn't find peace in my house when I was taking these bitter poison pills all the time and waiting for somebody else to fall. That's on me. That's not on them. It doesn't matter how justified you are with your feelings of resentment. And I just want to say, there's definitely justification in your feelings. So if you're feeling resentful, I'm sure that there is some justifiable reason for that. But the thing is, it's not helping you get to your end goal, even if you're really justified in your feelings by continuing to choose to feel resentful. So how do we tackle resentment in relationships and resentment connected to clutter? It's a combination of changing your mindset, communicating differently, and actually taking some actionable steps. So let's start with the mindset of resentment. How can we tackle this and shift this so that it's working in our favor instead of continuing to poison us? When we talk about mindset, one of the most important things that I had to recognize in order to move past the resentment phase of dealing with clutter was who am I doing this for? So, so much of my resentment was about having the burden of household responsibilities on my shoulder. So I live with my husband, but I, when my, you know, especially when our kids were younger, I had, I felt like I was carrying this burden of doing the majority of the household chores, the majority of the child rearing, the majority of the scheduling of everything that had to happen, the majority of the mental work of running a household and having a family. And that felt burdensome to me and unfair. But once I started digging deeper into this and learning how to overcome this resentment, I realized that a lot of the things that I was feeling resentful about were really more important to me 
than to anyone else. Why was I feeling resentful that my husband didn't notice the floors being dirty and clean them when it doesn't matter to him? I mean, he can deal with dirty floors. I can't. It was me who wanted the floors to be clean more frequently, not him. It doesn't matter to him. It doesn't matter to the kids. It mattered to my mental well-being, but not to anyone else's. So once I understood that what I was feeling resentful about really impacted me before anyone else, I was able to start taking more responsibility for what needed to be done because at the end of the day, I was doing this for me, for my mental health, for my mental well-being. I was taking these steps because it made me feel better. Yeah, it was for our family. We should live in a clean environment, no question. There's a spectrum of how comfortable people feel in different levels of cleanliness in their homes. And my, I need things to be cleaner than my husband does and my kids do. So of course, I mean, my kids are older now. They help out a lot more. But this goes back to expectations. If you didn't listen to my podcast last week about expectations, you should definitely head over there right after this and listen to it. My expectation was that everybody would want to have the exact same level of cleanliness in our house. I am responsible for my own expectations. And when other people don't care that much about what you care about, then you're doing this for you. It's a gift to yourself. So shifting your mindset and really understanding that this is for you. These things, first and foremost, that you want done, they're to prioritize your mental well-being. When you take care of these things that you feel resentful about, you're giving your future self a gift. And when I was able to shift my thinking around this, I would really begin to feel grateful that I had the, uh, the physical ability to take care of what needed to get taken care of. I had the time to take care of what needed to be taken care of, even if I had to squeeze it in and come to terms with how I was using my time. Uh, but I really understood that I could approach these tasks feeling grateful because I was doing them for me, for me. My family was benefiting, but my family also does things that benefit me. And this next step in this whole process is recognizing what other people are doing that's also benefiting you. This is called gratitude. Replacing resentment with gratitude is one of the best things that you can do to move forward in with your dealing with your clutter. Replace resentment with gratitude. When you start to think about something and you feel that little poison pill of resentment percolating in your heart, try and stop, take a breath, and think about something that you are genuinely grateful for. Replace resentment with gratitude. I guarantee it'll make a huge difference in your life. That's the mindset stuff. Recognize that you are doing these things for your mental well-being and replace the resentment with gratitude whenever possible. There are also some actionable things that you can do to tear down that resentment and replace it with happiness, positivity, love, and gratitude. I have three actionable steps that I recommend you take. Action step number one is recognize what you have control over. If there's a lot of clutter in your house, if you're feeling resentful about that, what is the clutter that you can control and tackle that first? We always, in all of my programs, deal with our own clutter. Everyone else's clutter, we'll figure that out moving forward. We'll figure out how to have good conversations about that, how to communicate better. But right now, your focus is on what you can control. When you get whatever you have executive control over, under control in your house, you are going to feel a thousand times better and that resentment is going to start chipping away. So what can you control? What can you take care of? Deal with that first and foremost. Actionable step number two, focus on whatever is going to make the biggest impact. Is there one single area in your life or in your relationship or in your finances that if it were cleared up, if it were clutter free, it would make a huge difference in your life. Identify that area and start there. We want to really tackle this resentment by making the most impactful change first. An actionable step number three is to add in self-care time into your schedule. This is so important. 
Oftentimes the resentment that we feel is connected to our time. I don't have time to do what I want to do because X, Y, and Z. So this is where you decide that X, Y, and Z are going to wait because you need your own self-care time. You need to do what you want to do. Build that into your schedule, prioritize it and let other things fall away. Build that time into your schedule. Instead of feeling resentful that you don't have the time, make the time. And maybe you need to reframe your thinking about this also. I used to think that if I didn't have 45 minutes to go for a run, I didn't have time for a run. Well, guess what? I can go for a 10 minute run also. <laughs> I can go for a 20 minute run. I can go for a 30 minute run. I don't need the full 45 minutes every single time I wanna go for a run. Shifting your thinking just a little bit can make a big difference and creating that time for you is one really significant way that you're chipping away at that resentment. So I'm asking you right now, how can you prioritize self-care this week? If you don't have an hour to do something, what can you do in a half an hour? What can you do in 20 minutes? How can you start to chip away at this resentment that you're feeling? Just drop it into the comments and share with us. We're gonna tie this all together now by talking about communication. The most effective strategy that I found in talking about the resentful feelings that I had with my husband and with my children and with whoever else I was feeling resentment with along the many years that I've been on this earth is to replace you with I. So when you're having a conversation, instead of talking about the other person and what they're doing, talk about you and how you're feeling. Instead of saying, you didn't do this, you're not taking care of things, you're not helping out, you're not doing X, Y, and Z, say, I am feeling stressed. I am feeling sad. I am feeling overwhelmed. I am feeling like I am carrying the majority of the burden. I am feeling this way. Not you are making me feel this way. I am feeling this way. This is a little switch that can make a really big difference in your communication because when somebody comes at you and tells you what you're doing wrong, your immediate reaction is to become defensive. And when somebody becomes defensive in a conversation, they're not gonna say nice things. And then you're gonna become defensive and you're not gonna say nice things. Instead of creating an offensive defensive structure to your conversation, which we know is not going to create results, focus instead on clearly communicating your feelings and be open to listening to what the other person has to say without becoming defensive yourself. That is my best bit of advice that I can give you about tackling the resentment in your relationships and the resentment that's associated with clutter. If you have things that have worked for you, please let us know in the comments, share your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast. Every week I have a new topic that's relevant to clutter, might be uncomfortable to hear, but really helps you tackle all of the clutter in your life. I'm Jess Marcy and I'll see you.